What's going on, everybody? And welcome back to Johnny K Picks. And in this video, I'll be going over my full card picks and predictions, along with the bets that I'm looking at so far for UFC Sao Paulo Almeida versus Lewis. Now, first things first, as always, please hit that like button for me. And if you enjoy the UFC as much as I do and you're new to the channel, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Both of those are for free. Also, leave some comments below, which is also free too. Uh, helps my videos out. Uh, your favorite bets this week, who your favorite fights you're looking forward to, all that good stuff. Um, also, too, just started up a Patreon about a month ago. We get to that real quick, and I'll give you a short little spiel. Patreon slash Johnny K Picks. I do all kinds of bets, NFL, all that good stuff, NBA, soccer bets. I've been doing really good on UFC. Obviously, you're going to get exclusive access to them. I will post free UFC bets still like I always do, but you will get these bets immediately. $5.99 a month. You also get my UFC cheat sheet as well, which ha which gives you all the potential parlay pieces I like. Uh, single bets, long shot parlays, every card. So definitely worth it if you want to take a look at that. There's a little bit more support to support my channel. So i got 26 members right now. So thank you for everyone for the support and all that good stuff. And real quick, too, I want to give a shout out to Face Meet Fist. I got some new apparel the other day. Got some T-shirts. I got a couple sweaters, all that good stuff. They do great apparel. Um, if, as you can see, they got some uh, fighter stuff from Andre Petrovsky, Algia, or Aljo. Um, you can also go on their website where that's where you can buy it, facemeetfist.com. This is their Instagram. Go ahead and give them a follow as well. Like I said, all their apparel is awesome. Looks really cool. And I love it. So definitely check them out. They do great stuff. But let's see. Uh, UFC 294. That's what I forgot what it was. Um, it was two weeks ago. I'm sure everyone watched all their breakdowns and the reaction videos for two weeks. I'm not going to go over the card. Everybody knows what happened. Uh, for my picks, I did end up going eight and three with the two no contests. And for my bets, I had seven of them. I only won two, and I lost minus 4.48 units. So not the greatest betting night for me. A lot of stuff just went the other way that I thought. So we'll get it back this week. No big deal. And uh, let's go ahead and get going for you. That way you're not waiting around. So we got Fernandez versus Mark Diacasey is the first fight here. We got Fernandez is 8-1. and one. Not sure his age. I think he's like 25. You're 25 or 26 years old. 5'9. Not sure his reach either. Daikis is uh 16 and 7, 30 years old, 5'10, with a 73 inch reach. So Fernandez is new making his UFC debut. He's a solid striker. He's got good power in his hands. He does have good grappling and good takedown defense, but he does like to keep it on the feet if possible. He's got very good combos, very quick with his hands. Uh, the Casey, well-rounded fighter. Now he used to just be a striker earlier on, but the last three or four fights, he's been working with his wrestling and grappling, showing a lot of that. So I would say he's well-rounded. Um, he seems to be a little timid on the feet as of late, which is maybe why he's been grappling more in wrestling. So I'm not sure what that kind of looks like, but he is still a good striker. He can be hittable at times. He's been club and sub the last couple of his fights that he's been finished. So He's never been knocked out technically, but like I said, he's been rocked a couple of times on the feet and then they end up getting a club and sub. So um, this is a tough fight to predict because I can kind of see both guys winning in their own way. I can see Fernandez maybe getting a knockout on the feet and I can see Dia Casey, you know, getting that wrestling going, maybe even getting a knockout on the feet too, or just racking up the control time. So this is going to be a close fight. I think the line is a little bit different now. I think Dia Casey is about minus 150 range. So he's Money's been coming in on Fernandez, and I get it. I'm going to stick with Dia Casey here. I liked him early on. I watched the tape afterwards. I still think he can get this one done. I think he he's a, has a little bit more options to win this fight. He can use that wrestling. He can stay on the feet, too. Um, I think Fernandez needs to keep this fight on the feet. Um, but if he does get taken down, like I said, he's got good grappling, too. So it's not like he's a fish out of water or anything. But um, give me Dia Casey to win this one. I just think he does mix in that wrestling and um, grappling, especially in the later round, second and third round. I think the first round will be fun. Uh, maybe Fernandez can get a knockout, but I think Dia Casey will stick around and get the decision win here. For the bets, I mean, Dia Casey at minus 150 is not a bad look for a money line. Now, I, wouldn't, I wasn't going to touch him at minus 200 range. You can look at the overs here too, but I think Dia Casey, or if you like the dog too, I mean, minus 120, minus 125, whatever, it's, whatever it is, I think that's not bad either. I think this is a pretty... Close 50-50 fight, but 
Um, you know, Fernandez, Fernandez is making his UFC debut in his hometown and might have that jitters. So give me DKC is about the better competition. He's a he's a vet. He's only 30 years old. It's not like he's 38 or anything. So he just has been looking kind of, you know, a little bit lackluster in the last two fights. But he can still get it done, though. I'll, t- I'll let you know that. Next one we got is going to be Ruiz versus Mora. Ruiz is 10 and 3, 30 years old, 5 foot with a 61 inch reach. And Mora is 9 and 0, 29 years old, 5'6, we'll say 67 inch reach. So we all know who Ruiz is. She's a very solid wrestler. Uh, she's got pretty good takedowns. She pushes forward. She tries to use her striking to, um, to set up her takedowns. She doesn't really have the greatest striking on the feet, and she's very hittable. But um, when she gets this fight to the mat, she has good ground and pound, and she works for uh, position over submission. Mora, UFC debut. She's making her UFC debut. She recently fought on the Dana White Contender Series, and looked she, and she looked very good uh, about a month ago, or yeah, almost two months ago. But she's a very good grappler. She's got very good takedown. She's very strong when she's on top. Good submission game. Her striking isn't the greatest either, but I would say, will say it is better than Ruiz's. And um, yeah, she's going to be the way bigger fighter here. Six inches of height, seven inches of reach. I think she's going to be stronger, if not at just as strong as Ruiz. So I'm going with Mora here all day. I just don't think too highly of Ruiz. I think, I mean, she's a good wrestler, but I think she needs to go like there's no atom weight division in the ufc unfortunately and i think that's where Ru- ruiz belongs and this fight's gonna be at straw weight at 115 and so mora's a big straw weight she's strong she also likes to grapple and i think you know she's she's just gonna be the better grappler especially when she's on top um i'm gonna say she does get a submission win over um ruiz so it'll probably be in the second or third round i don't i don't see like an early uh finish but give me more to win by submission in this one bets i mean you can you can probably parlay mora i think she's safe enough but i don't know at minus 400 if it was minus 300 i'd be more willing but yeah but i think i might just stay away or maybe play like some time props maybe like over one and a half depending on what the over two and a half is on here because i can see you go over one and a half for sure next one's going to be angela hill versus denise gomes Hill is 15 and 13, 39 years old, 5'3", 64 and a half inch reach. And Gomes is 8 and 2, 23 years old, 5'2", with a 63 inch reach. So Angela Hill, we all know what she's like. She's a very solid striker. There was a ton of volume. She doesn't really have the power to get any the finishes, but she does have some wrestling and grappling in her back pocket that she can use, but she mainly doesn't use it. Um, good cardio, very good volume, like I said, and she's very durable. I know in her last fight, she got pieced up and stuffed by Mackenzie Dern, which I'm surprised she stayed on there, um, stayed alive in that whole fight because she got a couple, her eye was all swollen and stuff, but Dern looked very good in that fight. Anyways, Denise Gomes is a, she's a well-rounded fighter, I would say. She's got a good striking with power in her hands. We saw it in her last fight. It lasted about 30 seconds, knocked out Yasmin. She did, she's got good takedowns. She's strong when she gets her arm, like her hands on her opponents. Um, she also has good grappling as well. She's very tough and durable and pretty decent cardio. This is going to be a good fight. And I kept going back and forth with this one because I just think Angel is going to be the better technical striker, but the more dangerous fighter with the more trick, not tricks, but with the more um, options with the wrestling and the grappling and power advantage is going to be on the goal side. She's youthful. So 15 years, um, you know, gap here. I'm just going to lean Gomes here. I, I, I mean, I know Angela Hill fought Mackenzie Dern, and Mackenzie Dern, you know, she's pretty good. But, I mean, Gomes can do what Mackenzie Dern did on the feet, I think. And she can also work in the wrestling and grappling, too, like Mackenzie Dern did as well. I mean, she's not as good on the gra- ground, but on the feet, I would say Gomes is about the same, if not better. So, um, would it shock me if Hill gets the upset here? No, because she's a UFC vet and she, we, we've seen it time and time. She looked very good against Emily Dakota. She looked very good against Lupi Godinez. But it seems like she's kind of slowing down a bit. And um, I'm going to go with the more youthful fighter in Gomes here to get it done. I'm going to say it gets done by decision. Like I said, Angela Hill is very durable. She's very tough. 
She's not going to quit or anything, but we also have another very tough and durable uh, fighter here in Gomes, too. So you can look at the over for bets. Um, it's pretty close to a pick em, So either side, if you like, I think is good value. Um, but yeah, I'm going to go with Gomes to win by the close decision. I do think it's going to be close, though. Would it shock me if it's a split decision? No. Another good bet that you can do, too. Next one could be Vitor Petrino versus Modestus Bukowskis. Petrino, 9 and 0, 26 years old, 6'2, with a 77 inch reach. Buskaskis is 15 and 5, 29 years old, 6'3, with a 78 inch reach. So Petrino, very powerful striker on the feet. He's got, he's got pretty good takedowns. He showed off some of his grappling and submission game in his last fight against uh, Procneo. And he's durable. He does slow down a little bit as the fight goes on, but um, he's not going to like death gas or anything. He had a very good fight against Anton Turkola, which I'm surprised that fight didn't end somehow because they were both landing very good shots the whole fight. But it went to decision. He got it done. And like I said, he's durable too. Uh, Modestus, solid striker. He stays at range very well. He tends to allow his opponents to back him up. So he circles around the cage a lot. So he does have pretty decent left and right or lateral movement, but um, he's a little low volume. His takedown defense is just okay. He's been out of his five losses. He's been finished four times. So that's not the greatest look here because Petrino is very dangerous. And yeah, and it's a good segue right there. I like Petrino here a lot. I think he gets this one done. I'm not the biggest Modestus fan, if you want to say. I think... You know, his last fight against Pauga, I watched it. It could have went the other way. I'm not going to lie, guys. It was that close. Even though it says unanimous, I don't know about unanimous. So um, I think Petrino is just the more dangerous fighter here. I think he can get it done by a finish on the feet. I think he can get the takedowns and maybe get a submission as well. And I can also see him winning a decision. I don't think Modestus has a chance for a knockout. I mean, I'd be, it, it could happen, but I think his path to victory is strictly just by decision and try to outstrike him. But he slows down in third round, too. So give me Petrino to win. I'm going to say he gets the knockout in the first or second round. Bets, I think Petrino's safe for a parlay. Just That's just me. Um, you can also look at the under here. Um, but I would say the... Or you can maybe even do Petrino inside the distance, too. Maybe, well, we'll see what the under is, but we'll see. Next one here is going to be Zaleski versus Fakradinov. Zaleski is 24 and 7, 36 years old, 5'11, 73 inch reach. And Fakhradinov is 22 and 2, 32 years old, 6 foot, 74 inch reach. So Zaleski, very solid striker. He's got power in his hands. He's got good grappling too, but he's mainly a striker. He wants to keep this on the feet. He's got good cardio, good volume as well. And yeah, he's been looking pretty good as of late. He um this fight, he did win uh, as an underdog, but it was very close. Let's put it that way. And then the St. Denis fight. I mean, if you're going to beat St. Denis, I know he was smaller, but that's that's a good win under his belt right now. I'll tell you that. Uh, Fakhradinov, though, very good wrestler. He shows some pretty good striking and power as well lately, especially in his last fight. I think that only lasted about, what, in a minute? Takedowns aren't the greatest, but they are pretty good. And if he doesn't get it the first time, he's going to keep going for it. He's going to chain wrestle you down um, from the uh, from the cage and to get his opponent down. He's got good cardio. He's got good top control when he does get the takedowns too. And he's got good ground and pound. So, um, yeah, it's a striker versus, you know, a wrestler here. And But I think Renat also has good striking too. So give me Renat here to win this one. I just think he's got more tools to win this fight. I think he's... Um, he's going to be able to use that wrestling and get those takedowns, stay safe on top, and rinse and repeat. Um, if this fight does play out in the feet, though, it's going to be close. But I just think Renat, he's not stupid. Let's put it that way. He's going to go for the takedowns eventually, get this fight to the mat, wear down Zaleski a little bit in the first round, and then go from there. I'm going to say Renat wins this one by decision. I don't think a finish happens from either side. So you can look at the overs here, too. But I like Renat. Um, Fakhradin off to win this one uh, by decision. I would say 29-28 for sure. The first round could be Zaleski, but I think as the fight goes on, I think uh, the takedowns will come easier. Next one is going to be Daniel Marcos versus Victor Hugo. Marcos is 15-0, 30 years old, should be 14-1, I'm sorry. 
15 and 0, 30 years old, 5'7 with a 69 inch reach. And Hugo is 24 and 4, 30 years old, 5'7 with a 71 and a half inch reach. So, real quick, this fight is at Bantamweight. Marco or Hugo just recently fought at Flyweight on the Dana White Contender Series. So Marcos, though, he's a very solid striker. He does have some power in his hands. Not the greatest, like, knockout guy, but very good boxing. Um, pretty good volume, at least early in the fight. Solid cardio. He's durable. He's got pretty good combos. And, um, yeah, in the last fight, I'll go, I'll go right to it against David Grant. I don't think he won that fight, even though it was a split decision. But that's just me. He, started, he sort of faded, at in, like, in the third round. So that's not the greatest of looks, but it is what it is. Um, he does have good takedown defense, so we'll see what happens here. And Hugo's making his UFC debut. This is a short notice fight, maybe like a couple weeks. He just fought on the Dana White Contender Series as well and looked very good. Um, but he's well-rounded, very good grappling, very good submissions with the knee bars, the heel hooks, all that good stuff. Uh, good striking. He can keep his hands down a little bit more. He can be a little hittable on the feet, but he is dangerous early on the feet. He can get those knockouts as well. Um, as the fight goes on, he does fade a bit. So that's something to look at this fight and is is on short notice. So very interesting fight. And like I said, although Marcos, I thought he didn't win the last fight against David Grant in his UFC debut, I think he can keep this fight on the feet with his takedown defense. And I think that's where he wins this fight. Um, as the fight goes on too, I do think he'll be able to build more a little bit than Hugo. Hugo, I think he needs to get this fight to the mat. And but Marcos is very tough um, and, and hard to get down too. So um, we'll see what happens. But on the feet, I do favor Marcos. I'm going to give him the slight edge to win a very close decision. Um, if Hugo took this fight on a full camp, I might pick Hugo. Actually, like I was this close to picking Hugo, but I, I think Marcos can stop the takedowns, and eventually Hugo will get a little bit tired in the second round. And I think those takedowns won't be coming as often, and it'll be a striking fight. Marco should be able to outstrike him and land, but maybe even the better strikes. So um, Marcos with a decision win here, I'm going to stay away from a betting um, angle. Maybe look at the over. Marcos has never been finished. Like I said, Hugo's more dangerous on the map, but he is dangerous on the feet. So give me, give me Marcos by a close decision, but this is going to be an interesting fight. I want to see how Hugo um, does in this fight. Next one's going to be Brenner versus Ribovix. Brenner is 15 and 3, 26 years old, 5'10, 72 inch reach. And Ribovix is 12 and 1, 27 years old, 5'10, with a 69 inch reach. So Brenner is a well rounded fighter. I would say he, his grappling is a little bit better than his striking, but he's durable, as we saw in his last fight. Very good cardio. He's got very good submissions, too. Power on the feet. Um, he can be hittable, as most of the shoot the box guys are, and he does push forward like all of them do as well, but that's just their style. Ribovix, though, is a very good striker. He's got good power in his hands. He's got good combos, good boxing. He's durable as well. He could wrestle if he wants to, but I don't think he's going to. The thing about him, though, is takedown defense isn't the greatest, especially as the fight goes on. It's like he almost accepts those takedowns if, he, if somebody shoots from like six feet away. He'll just be like, okay, you can take me down. That's fine. But he does have a pretty good get-up game, and he does have good submission defense too. So um, that's something to think about. But this is going to be a very fun fight because both guys are finishers in their different ways, if you want to say. But I'm just going to go with the more versatile uh, fighter. I think he's more well-rounded. I'm going to say Brenner wins this one. On the feet, I would give Rubavix a slight edge. Like I said, on the mat, though, definitely going to give that to Brenner all day. Will this fight go with the decision when both these guys are finishers? Maybe, because Brenner's only been, never been finished, and I don't think Rubivix has been finished either. Nope. Both these guys never been finished, and they are finishers. So it does set up for a finish here, doesn't it? <laughs> so give me Brenner to win. I'm going to say this does go to decision. I just think he gets the more impactful shots as the fight goes on. He gets the grappling going and um, gets some control time and takedowns and wins this fight. Very close fight. Wouldn't um, I think it's about minus 150 for Brenner right now, so it's pretty close to a pick -em. I don't blame anybody either way, but I do favor Brenner just with that grappling and uh, takedown upside here. 
Main event, we got Ishmael Bonfim versus uh Bichelle. Let me get this down here. We got Bonfim is 19 and 4, 27 years old, 5'8, 71 inch reach. And Pichelle is 14 and 3, 40 years old, almost 41. 510, 72 inch reach. So we all know who the Bonfim brothers are. This is the I don't want to say the lesser of the two, but this is the non dangerous one, if you want to say. <laughs> but, but this is a, he's still very good. He's got dangerous striking, very good boxing. He's got uh, power in his hands. He pushes forward. He has good takedowns and grappling if need be. be ugh, if need be, but he's mainly a striker, like I said. And Pichelle, solid striker in his own right. He can wrestle at times. He's very durable, solid cardio. But his biggest, biggest red flag is his takedown defense, and it's not even remotely okay. So, and he's 40 years old. He's 40 years old now. He hasn't fought in a while, a year and a half, and he's coming back. Is this his last fight? Is this his last fight on his contract? Is he retiring after this fight? What's going to happen here? I don't know. But I got to go with Bonfim from, oh, I got to go with Bon him here. Um, he's just the more dangerous guy, younger guy. He's more well-rounded. And I think he can mix in the takedowns if need be, if he's having trouble on the feet very easily. And I just think he's quicker on the feet too. He's got the quicker strikes and I think he's more dangerous. So to me, Michelle, I think his only way to win is, you know, if Bonfim slips on a banana peel. And I know it sounds bad, but I just think Bonfim is the better fighter everywhere. So Bonfim, I'm going to say he does get the knockout. I know Michelle's pretty durable, but I think as the fight goes on, I think the damage can add up. And I think he can get this one done um, inside the distance. Bets, I mean, you know, you can put Bonfim in a parlay. I'm sure it's safe. You can look at the... But I'm just going to stay away for now and see what happens and look at the lines later. Maybe like a Bonfim like inside the distance or something like that and see what that's priced at. You can maybe look at the spreads to minus three and a half. I think he can win all three rounds for sure. So that's something I could think about doing the spread for this one. Next one's going to be Rodolfo Vieira versus Armin Petrosian. Very good fight here. Vieira, 9 and 2, 34 years old, 6 foot, 73 inch reach. Petrosian's 8 and 2, 33 years old, 6'3, 71 inch reach. So Petrosian's a, oh, I'm sorry. Uh, Vieira is a very good grappler, very good submissions on the mat. Oh, his takedowns are just okay. They can get sloppy as the fight goes on, especially, but his first couple takedowns are very good. Uh, striking is just okay. He does have power in his hands, though, if he does land. So he can slow down as the fight goes on. His striking defense isn't the greatest either, too, so he does get hit up or hit pretty decently. I know in the Cody in his last fight against Cody Brundage, he was getting pieced up a bit, too. That's not the greatest of looks, but, hey, he got the job done, so that's all that matters. Trozian, very good kickboxer. He throws a ton of volume. He has very good kicks, very good leg kicks. Takedown defense, though, isn't the greatest, but he does have a good get-up game, and he also has pretty good submission defense if he does get in trouble and in control or on when he gets taken down and um, his opponent is on top control and he's controlled. So he does have good submission defense, as we've seen. Um, striker versus grappler matchup here. And I'm going to go with the striker as I tend to do. Uh, I just think Petrosi may get taken down once early. But I just think in the first round, that's all he needs to worry about is don't get taken down, stuff the takedowns, wear down on Vieira a little bit, make get his cardio going. And what in the second round hits, I think Petrosian's going to take over. He's going to get more volume, land more volume. He's going to be able to stuff all the takedowns of Vieira. And Vieira, it just, I mean, Petrosian's striking is going to be way quicker too. So I can see Petrosian winning maybe a late finish or a decision win here too. I think Vieira is kind of like first round submission or bust. And yeah, I got to go with Petrosian here. The lines are moving a little bit back and forth. Who's the favorite, who's or not. Um, but I like Petrosian money line, whatever it's at right now. I think it's about minus 105, minus 110. I just think he gets it done. I mean, Vieira has a good chance to win this fight too though, but I just think there's just less room for error for him. I think he needs to get that takedown early. Um, and then get the submission win shortly after that. If not, I just don't see him winning a decision. And I don't see him winning a late finish either. So give me Petrosian to win. I'll say by decision. Wouldn't be shocked if it's like a third round knockout, though. Next one's going to be Cal Barallo versus uh, Magomedov. 
Tayo is 14 and 1, 30 years old, 6'1, 75 inch reach, and Magomedov is 25, 5 and 1, 33 years old, 6'2, 78 inch reach. So Kyle is very well rounded. He's got very good grappling. He's got good takedowns as well. Solid striking. He's um he's I wouldn't say he's the most powerful, but he does have some, he does have pretty good power in his hands. He's got good cardio. He's durable. The only little thing with Kyle, though, that I just I wish he can work on is his finishing ability, whether it's going to be submissions or striking uh, like KO power. He just doesn't seem to have that like finishing. Um, I don't know that 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 little er, give me that finish. Like, you know what I mean? I, I, I don't I just want him to get that like rear naked choke. He always controls his opponents, but he just doesn't get the finish. So that's the one little thing with him. But other than that, he's very good. Good fight IQ. Like I said, everything's really good. Magomedov. He's taking this fight on short notice, but he is a very dangerous striker early. Um, he's got wild and crazy stuff, flying knees. Um, he, he can be hittable on the feet as well. He doesn't wrestle, but he can throw in some takedowns here and there. That's going to only um, gas him out a little bit more. And he slows down as the fight goes on, as we saw in his last fight against Sean Strickland. But Sean Strickland's one of those guys where he uses his cardio to his advantage. So, um. Yeah, give me Kyle here all day. I think if Kyle can survive the first three or four, three, let's just say three minutes of the first round, I think Kyle can get those takedowns rather easy in the second round. I think he'd be okay on the feet. He just needs to be careful with the first like half a round. And after that, work in your grappling, work in your wrestling. And I think he should be able to get this one done inside the distance. And I'll say a third round submission. But it wouldn't shock me again if it's going to be a, a clear decision win either. Um, again, I think Magomedov is just, he's dangerous early. I think he's got a, a shot to win in the first round, but Kyle's never been finished either. So should be a good fight, but give me Kyle to win this one. His line has been dropping for some reason. It's at minus 250, which I don't know why. That's I think maybe a lot of people think Magomedov is going to win this fight, I guess. But I think Kyle is the better overall fighter here. He, he's not the more dangerous fighter, but I think as the fight goes on, he will be the more dangerous fighter too. So, Kyle, third round submission. Next one's going to be uh, Nascimento versus D1 Maze. Let's go. Nascimento is 10 and 1, 30 years old, 6'2, with an 80 inch reach. And Maze is 10 and 5, 31 years old, 6'6, with an 81 inch reach. So, both these guys fought a while back, I believe maybe it was a maybe it was more than three years ago they did fight a while back and nascimento won in the second round by rear naked choke so it, that's probably what's going to happen here anyways nascimento is a good grappler he's got very good submissions for a heavyweight uh good takedowns his striking is, is pretty good too so i would say he's more so he's better grappler than striker but he can strike and he's not terrible at it or anything like that and Mays, on the other hand Okay, striker. He's got a ton of power in his hands if he lands, but he's super low volume. He can wrestle, but he doesn't wrestle. His takedowns aren't that great. And honestly, he's just not great anywhere. Like, he's just okay. And after the first round, if he doesn't get a takedown or if he doesn't get a finish on the feet, it kind of just seems like he's just there to survive and make it to the third round and... Hope for the best, and maybe he can get a decision win. But he's too low volume to win a decision. So he needs to get takedowns here. But I don't think he's going to because now Cimento is very dangerous off his back on the mat. So he's probably going to keep us on the feet. And I I think I think this is Rodrigo's fight all day. I'm kind of surprised his line's going down. He's at minus 180. Kind of leaning for a bet there to put him in a parlay. But I think now Cimento gets this one done later in the fight again like he did last fight maybe late second or third round when the takedowns are going to be coming. I mean, Mays' takedown defense isn't that great, even though he's a really big, tall guy. He gets taken down rather easily. So I think Nazi Mento can get a takedown whenever he wants, and then shortly after that, maybe after like one or two takedowns, he can get a rear naked choke or a ground and pound knockout, something like that. So give me Nazi Mento by a second or third round finish. I like the over one and a half here. If it's set at one and a half for some reason, if it's set at two and a half, that's where it gets dicey. So um, look at those bets when they come out. But Nascimento at minus 180 isn't a bad play at all here, even though it is a lower level heavyweight fight. But you got to take it where, when you can get it. 
The other Bond film brother, Gabriel versus Nicholas Dalby. Bond film is 15 and 0, the more dangerous one. 26 years old, 6'1 with a 72 inch reach. And Dalby is 22, 4 and 1, 38 years old now, 5'11 with a 74 and a half inch reach. So this is going to be a very good fight. Bond film is super well rounded. He's dangerous everywhere, but he's especially dangerous with his submission game. He's got a lot of club and subs. Um, he's very, he has very good grappling. He's got very good striking too. Good takedowns, good cardio, good everything. The only thing with me, with me is a lot of his fights, I think all of his fights have ended by finish. So he's never been to decision. And I don't even believe he's been, okay, he's been to round three once, barely. Okay, twice. Okay, so he's only been to round three twice, but he's never been to decision. And on the other side here, Nicholas Dalby is one of those guys who's always been to decision, but um, he's well-rounded too. He's solid everywhere, but just not great anywhere. I would say his best traits, though, are his durability and his cardio. He puts on a pace on his opponents, and he wears them down. So that's a little worrisome for me because I can kind of see Dalby doing this here. Dalby just needs to survive round one, and, and maybe he can win this rounds two and three like he's had has before. I know in his last fight against Muslim Solikov, that's what he did. He got it done. Um, this is going to be a fun fight, though. I'm going to go with Bonfim because I just think he's too dangerous not to pick. And I do think Bonfim can win a decision. He can win rounds one and two, and he's going to have to survive round three. We'll see. So, But is there a world that where Dalby can win? I mean, yeah, but it's very unlikely. But give me Bonfim the win. I'm going to say he does get a submission. Maybe it's like a club and sub, too. But Dalby's very durable, but he can be hittable on the feet, though. And Bonfim is just, like I said, he's just dangerous everywhere. So give me like a club and sub. I'll say like either late first or early second round. But uh, for bets, I mean, you could throw Bonfim in the parlay if you want to. You can look at the over-unders here. This is, it, this is a tough one for over-unders. I would stay away. And we got the main event here, Jailton Almeida versus Derek Lewis, which was going to be Curtis Blades, but he pulled out. Almeida is 19 and 2, 32 years old, 6'3", with a 79-inch reach. And Derek Lewis is 27 and 11, 38 years old, 6'3", with a 79-inch reach as well. Almeida, we all know who he is. Amazing grappler with amazing submissions. He's got pretty good wrestling and good takedown. He's very strong once he gets his hands around his opponent to take it for those takedowns. His striking is just okay. He does use a lot of um, like T kicks up the middle to set up takedowns. So that's something to watch out for because Eric Lewis probably is looking at that all day to maybe land a flying knee. Um, speaking of flying knees, Lewis, he's one of those guys. We all know who he is too. He's a, one of those one punch knockout or flying knee or bus guys like he's super low volume he waits for the right time and or he'll take some chances and a lot of times it works but lately if it doesn't work he's gonna lose probably by knockout or submission but um he's very um i lost my train of thought okay but he does like lewis does fade after the first round especially especially if um his opponent is going for takedowns, and I think Almeida will be going for takedowns. I think that's what he should be doing. Um, you saw it in the uh, Sergey Spivak fight. Um, Sergey basically just took him down, let him get back up, took him back down, let him get back up. It wore down uh, Lewis, and Lewis, kind of, I don't want to say he gave up, but he does have a little bit of quit in him after a while if he gets too tired. So to me, this is Almeida all day. Now, is there a world... Where Derek Lewis can win, yeah, you saw it in his last fight with the flying knee uh, knockout to DeLima. So, yeah, something like that can happen, of course. But if you're looking at it logistically and logically, Almeida should win this one. Under one and a half rounds, I'm going to look at that bet when that props comes out. Almeida's about minus 450. I think he's safe for a parlay, but it's very um, dangerous and because there's going to be violence. And Lewis is one of the most dangerous heavyweights um in the ufc so gonna go with almeida i think he's gonna get a finish here i would say late first early second round i think that under one and a half is going to hit though but all right guys those were all the my picks and predictions for ufc sao paulo thank you everybody for watching um as always 
on your way out, please hit that like button for me. Subscribe if you're new, or if you haven't, leave some comments below. Also, check out my Patreon at Johnny uh, at Patreon dot com slash Johnny K Picks, or you can just search my name Johnny K Picks on Patreon. You should be able to find it. Live shows will be Thursday night and Saturday night. I think Thursday will be on my channel if I'm correct, and Saturday will be on Cody's channel for um, Blood Money MMA bets. So definitely appreciate you watching as always, and I hope we have some good fights here because UFC 294 the refing was pretty bad. So hopefully they make up for it. So until next time, guys, happy fight night.